evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd firstly like to thank and show our appreciation to the Reverend Captain Edith Query for graciously accepting our invitation to preside over tonight's service, dedication and unveiling ceremony. Who at very short notice has come from her new parish of St Luke's in Hudnet in England to be here tonight with the people of the Shackle and the family of Rifleman William Coggle to kindly dedicate this our new memorial. I wish also to thank our councillors and community leaders for taking time from their busy schedules to also be here. I would further wish to extend a warm welcome to the Royal Irish Rangers, Old Comrades Associations, the Somme Associations, members of the Orange Institution, the UDF Regimental Band, and of course, you the public. We gather here tonight to pay homage and remember the servicemen and women of the Greater Shangal who paid the ultimate sacrifice during the war years of 1939-1945. I would now like to address the reason we have chosen to unveil this memorial in our garden. After much debate within the association, we decided, although we are widely known as being a Somme association, remembering the gallantry and sacrifice of the 36th Ulster Division, we decided that those same sacrifices, courage and gallantry, the people of the Greater Shankill had shown during World War II, and they too had lost their fathers, sons, brothers, mothers and sisters, as with the First World War. This community self-sacrifice had also to be recognised by a fitting and lasting memorial. This was achieved through the generosity of Rachel, Mom, William, Coggle's family circle and their presentation of this fine artillery piece. We also recognise the local businesses and members of the community for their good work. And of course, the fine restoration work done by the Gun Memorial Project team from within our own organisation. Many of the Shankill sons and daughters answered the call during World War II, but tonight I would like to reflect on two of those gallant sons. William Coggle, aged 18, and Alexander Boyles, 29. Both young men with a conviction to serve their country. Firstly, Rifleman William Coggle. Willie, at the age of 17, upon hearing the call, decided to put his life on hold and volunteer and enlist into the Royal Ulster Rifles. Unfortunately, being too young, he was turned down. So believing he had to do something for the war effort, he volunteered as an Air Warden instead. But as soon as he came of age, he enlisted into the RUR. He left his home in Melbourne Street, wished his mother Eliza and father Robert goodbye, and said his farewells to his two brothers and five sisters, as another two of his brothers had early answered the call and were serving overseas. Then off he went to Hollywood to begin his training with the Royal Ulster Rifles. But then, as many young riflemen from Belfast found themselves, including my father, upon enlistment, he was seconded to the 2nd Battalion, the London Irish Rifles. This was the territorial battalion of the Royal Ulster Rifles, to fight within the newly formed 38th Irish Division. Within this brigade, he would see some of the most ferocious fighting men from these shores would ever see. Fighting battles from the deserts and towns of North Africa to Sicily, and the vineyards and valleys of Italy, where after a fierce battle and liberating a small town and securing their position in early December 1943 near the Sangro River, Rifleman William John Sewell Coggle and his friend and comrade would die side by side, killed by enemy shellfire and found together. They now lie forever in a foreign field in the Sangro River War Cemetery, Italy. Another of the Shankill sons was a young man, 29 years old. His name was Alexander Boyles of Arkwright Street, just off Agnes Street. He was single and lived at home with his mother Annie and his father Alec, and also his five sisters. Like William and most of the other young men at that time, he too volunteered for service. But on this occasion, not into the army, but the Royal Navy. He joined the Navy because his mother asked him not to join the Army. Her reasoning? She thought it safer, having already lost her son William to the Battle of the Somme during World War I. 
Alec left his home in 1939 and joined the Royal Navy. At that time, the Navy needed some mariners, and Alec eagerly stepped up to the mark, volunteering for this perilous position. So after training, he was posted to Her Majesty's submarine H-49, encountering many battles with success. Petty Officer Alexander Boyles, which had come to the sea, when the submarine he was on was sunk by a German anti-submarine flotilla off the Dutch coast on the 18th of October 1940, while on patrol. Unfortunately, this left his mother and father heartbroken, with their only two sons both having been lost to wars. <clears throat> it's the stories of men and women like these that should make us all feel proud to be members of the Shankle community, a community that during time of national crisis have stood up and been counted, to have shown courage and sacrifice and to have gladly give their lives for their fellow countrymen. But we also must remember tonight the families of those that didn't return, as the pain and suffering those families had to endure must have been devastating. So ladies and gentlemen, we in the First Shankle Psalm Association feel mournfully indebted to the service and sacrifice of these servicemen and women. Tonight, in this the 70th anniversary year of the end of World War II, and by opening this memorial, we intend to show that they have not been forgotten, nor will their sacrifice ever be forgotten. I would ask you, ladies and gentlemen, on this Remembrance Day, reflect on all their sacrifices and where your puppy has prayed. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And I'd like to hand you over to Captain Reverend Edith Query, who will commence the service in dedication. Thank you. I would like to thank the First Shankle Psalm Association for asking me to dedicate this memorial. It is a great privilege to do so. You know, when I first heard about this memorial, I certainly didn't expect anything anywhere like what we're looking at tonight. This 25 pounder gun began service in 1937. It was used effectively throughout World War II and was only retired from frontline service in 1967. This gun had a crew of six men and saw action as we heard in Europe, North Africa, Burma and in particular El Alamein. And that's very close to my heart because I have an uncle that's buried in El Alamein and I've been out a few times to his grave and he grew up just across the road in Esmond Street so it was lovely to be at the cemetery in El Alamein and actually see another one of these guns and to think that we have one now here on the Shankle is absolutely wonderful. This gun is a reminder of World War II and is part of the history of the Shankle. So I dedicate this memorial tonight to all the brave men and women 
who fought and died with courage and honour. May we, as the next generation, never forget their sacrifice that they made for each one of us. And may we today support and thank all our forces at home and abroad who are still fighting for justice and peace. I want to share these words with you, if I may. Words that were found written on the cell wall of a Jewish prisoner in Cologne. I believe in the sun, even when it is not shining. I believe in love, even when I cannot feel it. I believe in God, even when he is silent one man's faith in God. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, after the last post is sounded, the silence will be broken with the sound of gunfire. So please be aware of that. Thank you. Bigger?
Let us pray. God our Father, we thank you for your mercy towards our nation throughout its long history. We thank you for the bravery of so many men and women. Teach us all, as citizens of this country, to rely on your strength and to accept our responsibilities to one another, that we may serve you faithfully and honour your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Captain of the Queen, please. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.